Lee Street opens at a record high following positive global cues as investors await key rate decisions from the Fed this week. The Nifty trades around 25,400. Banking and mid-cap stocks relatively outperform the mid-cap index, sitting with a gain of a third of a percent. The new kid on the block, Bajaj Housing Finance, sees a stellar debut on the exchanges. List at a premium of 110 percent at around 150 rupees per share in comparison to its issue price of around 70 rupees a share. Other stocks that make their debut on D Street today, we have trailer axles and suspensions manufacturer cross listing at 240 rupees, while Tollins Tyres lists at 228 rupees versus the issue price of 296 rupees. In fact, shortly we'll have the management of Cross joining in to discuss their post-listing strategies. Jewelry stocks Xenco Gold and TBC continue to rally as gold hits another record high on hopes of a rate cut from the US Central Bank in the next week. And another stock which is buzzing around today is Aditya Birla Fashion climbs nearly a percent after the stock comes out of FNO ban. Hello and welcome to Chartbusters. I'm Rajesh D'Souza. With me, as always, is Mangala Malu. And as you can see, to the top of the screen, all the frontline indices are trading well in the green. And the key one to note today is Bajaj Housing Finance. Beautiful listing. It doubles your money if you're one of the lucky ones that got allotted. Hey, Mangala. One of the lucky ones being the, you know, uh, core word yeah. out here because not a lot of people who applied did get allotment into that and the ones who didn't uh, may look at this 100% mm. listing and feel a little jittery about entering afresh. But uh, be that as it may, we do have a few ideas for profit coming to for you, some from our colleagues from Money Control Pro. And today we have Jitendra Gupta who joins in with a stock that he's been tracking. Jitendra, what do you have on your list today? Let us focus on Indian Energy Exchange. Uh, last year, IEX stock had hit a low for rupees 115 a share. Investors were concerned about lower volumes and potential competition, which made the outlook seems little uh, shaky. But here is what happened. The company did not panic. They focused on diversifying and growing businesses, uh, and that is started started to pay off. IEX has uh, since demonstrated resilience, achieving a 19% growth in revenue during the first quarter of 2024 driven by almost a 11% increase in India's power demand. In August, the company, uh, August 34, the company recorded close to 36% year-on-year growth in total volumes. Volumes of renewable energy certificates surged by an impressive 737% on a year-on-year -year basis. This tells us that IEX is benefiting from the long-term trend in the renewable energy. IEX has indicated its ability to maintain 17 to 18% volume growth in the future uh, that is driven by renewable energy and favorable regulations. They are also rolling out new products like green uh, real-time market. Uh, they have, they are expanding into gas, carbon exchange, coal exchange. So there is a lot of potential value there. Meanwhile, stock is trading at uh, around rupees 220, uh, which reflect improved market confidence, even at current market price at, at 34 times its FI27 estimated earnings. It offers reasonable value. All right, while we're talking about uh, Bajaj Housing Finance, uh, remember there are other couple of listings today as well. Tollins Tires was one of them. The other one was Cross, a manufacturer of sub and supplier of trailer axles and suspensions, had a decentish debut on the exchanges. So Cross listed with a mild premium, and now that is expanded to about 10% as well. Three and a half, four percent seen for Tollins as well. Currently now trading at a five percent premium to its issue price. So let's talk about Cross itself. We have the management uh, uh, of the company joining in. We have Kunal Rai, the executive director and the CFO of the company joining in. Thanks a lot, Kunal, for joining in. The last time we spoke, you did speak about, you know, the 70 crore capex that would yield the next 250 crores of revenues for you and the debt repayment, which would aid your net profit margins by about one and a half percent on account of reduction in finance costs. Let's talk about growth from here on as well. With the capex and with your organic growth plans, at what rate can your top line compound from current levels over the next three to four years? And uh, what are the expected margins? Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for having us. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, the last uh, three years, we've grown uh, at a CAGR of approximately 44%. Uh, 
uh, our top line has grown from uh, 300 odd crores to 620 crores in FI24. And going forward, uh, we plan to be uh, doing a capex of approximately 70 crores. Um, the, the allocation of this would be, the first one would be on our axle beam uh, extrusion plant. Um, the last three years, uh, we've done very well uh, in our trailer axle and uh, suspension segment uh, from just, you know, 12% contribution to our revenue that's grown, grown to uh, 44% and we're one of the largest players um, and the fastest growing players uh, in this segment. So we're going in for a new technology uh, of the axle beam, which is currently being done uh, in a fabricated uh, design. We're going for an extrusion, which is a single piece construction. And we feel that uh, is going to be a game changer in this industry and uh, the, the growth should be uh, similar going uh, ahead. Our component business uh, with our OEMs is, uh, has also grown, uh, even after the MNHCV segment uh, not expanding uh, very much. And uh, the, the new focus of the company would be uh, on the export horizons. Uh, we've been a domestic player uh, up to now. Uh, we've got two great customers whom we are working with, uh, <coughs> and, and we see uh, a lot of developments there. All right. Hi, Kunal. Good morning and congratulations first on a solid listing. This is Nigel on this side. Welcome to the stock market. We'll be looking forward to interacting with you more often. And it's a bumper listing. The stock up 10 percent. Let's get a little bit more into detail then. You know, last year you were in that vicinity of around 620 crores. Now you have Capex, which is value addition, as you are explaining to us. And it could also give you a fairly good asset turnover. So by FY26, do you see yourself in the vicinity of around 950 to 1,000 crores? Is that possible? And also you briefly mentioned, since we're focusing on the top line, that exports as well, there's an opportunity out there. How much could exports contribute as a percentage of your mix, say in the next two to around three years? So uh, on the export front, uh, you know, the journey has uh, just started. Uh, it was just 1% to our revenue uh, in FI24. But uh, we were working with a company based out of Sweden. They make uh, propeller shafts uh, for the European OEMs. Uh, that's LEX. And we've got uh, close to five to six product families that we've developed uh, for them. And uh, th that uh, mass production has already commenced. The other company which uh, we are working with is uh, in Japan uh, and they're as well a MNHCV uh, manufacturer. So with these two companies, uh, we are looking at uh, good growth uh, from them in the next two years. Uh, we, we expect double digit contribution uh, uh, from our exports to our revenue. Uh, these are confirmed orders backed by purchased or, or purchased orders okay. and development uh, costs. Double budget by when? And, uh, from from the uh, from uh, in the next uh, couple of years or so, and okay. uh, also from uh, our issue size, uh, we are looking at um, uh, we're looking at investing in uh, machining equipment uh, so, uh, so that we can ramp up to uh, the volumes uh, which which have been uh, uh, laid out by them. All right, and, uh, and as well on our, uh, yeah. Kunal, Kunal, 1,000 crores by FI, uh, th FI 26, doable? 950 to 1,000 crores, let's give you a little bit of a leeway. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, 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 we'll, uh, we'll work uh, our best towards uh, growing <coughs> the similar way we have uh, grown. Uh, that's okay. uh, important. Uh, as, as we said, the MNHCV space isn't doing well, but we're in the uh, we're in the trailer axle segment, and uh, the prime mover, or you could say the tractor trailer segment within the MNHCV space, is growing close to 20, 25 percent every year. So uh, that's going to be a great portion from uh, where our growth uh, would be generating. If you're growing at the rate that you are growing at in the past as well, I mean that thousand crore number could come in two years instead of three as you're talking about it, and 25% uh, plus as well, you know, you double your revenue in about three years. What the street wants to know is on your margins as well. You know, on uh, your EBITDA front, you've improved your margins from sub 10%, uh, say 9.9% in FY22, to about 13% in FY24, with increased exports coming in, increased proportion of value-added products coming in. Where do we see margins headed? Sh should we see them around 15, 16%? If yes, by when? 
So, uh, you know, we are a company which has always uh, believed in backward integration. We uh, do everything ourselves, right from the machining to the forging. And uh, for our axle business, we even set up our uh, foundry for our own captive requirement to manufacture brake drums and hubs. And that's how our margins uh, have increased uh, from 10% to uh, 13% uh, EBITDA in FY24. PAT has also got, gone up from 45 to 7.2%. Uh, in, in a span of three years. And uh, with, with the axle beam extrusion uh, coming in, uh, that's uh, a single piece, uh, a single piece uh, a beam. Uh, it's lighter, it's more cost effective, and uh, also a shift to the exports. Uh, our margins are uh, going to get better as well. How much better, Kunal? You're doing some backward integration. You have your change in your revenue mix as well. Could, do you see yourself get to the mid-teens, maybe 15% yeah. odd? Yeah, we'll obviously target. Uh, we'll always target uh, that kind of epita margins in the couple of years with uh, our uh, beam extrusion and the exports uh, ramping up. All right. You know, you said that your current capex, the last time you joined us, of about 70 crores could yield revenue of 250 crores. That is still, you know, taking care of growth for just the next uh, couple of years given by the growth rate that you're targeting. Are you looking at CapEx beyond this 70 crore, say, over the next couple of years as well? If you could give us a sense of, at peak, what your revenue could be, largely because the rate at which you're growing, do you have enough capacity? So, on the utilization front, uh, we are working currently at uh, 70%. Uh, utilization um, from capacity point of view uh, uh, the the heavy investments which mainly go into the forging and the foundry equipments have to be planned uh, well in advance and uh, from the 70 crores that we're doing we're investing in more forging presses uh, and a new line in uh, the, our foundry as well which uh, would be uh, suffice for our next three to four year uh, growth plan uh, and as far as machining equipment is concerned uh, that's uh, that can be planned uh, in a shorter term as well you know a, a cnc machine or something can be available in the 60 or 90 days time so that's how we look at uh, managing our capacities and uh, uh, yes the the, the we've we've uh, laid out a 70 crore plan which would be suffice for our targets that we have for the next uh, 2 to 3 years so at Current reckoning, you can do about 1,100 to 1,200 crores of revenue, including the 70 crore that you're doing? Let's see. Uh, we we uh, really focus on our efficiencies. We've got a great uh, gross fixed assets uh, turnover times. That's around 3.6x. Uh, uh, we believe uh, to do more with what we have. So, uh, we, again, on the growth way, we, we look at uh, growing in the similar fashion that uh, we have in the past. All right, uh, Kunal, wishing you well. All the best. Uh, we're going to hold you to these numbers. Enjoy the day. Welcome to the stock market. It's been a good listing for you as well as your team. Well, on that note, though, we'll slip into a short break. When you come back, we'll continue our focus on the markets. We'll get a technical check. Shivangi is waiting for us on the other side. <clears throat> Welcome back. Just keep an eye out on a couple of these stocks from the broader markets. They're spiking and how right now. Dixon Tech is one of them, up around 4 odd percent, has moved to the high point of trade. The other couple of stocks which are doing well, we have uh, United Breweries, which too has spiked, currently moving towards the high end of today's trading range, along with India Cements and Marico. Remember on Marico and all the other edible oil companies, we made this point earlier that the downtick would only be sentiment negative because as we speak, you know, uh, they have been reductions in palm oil prices from the exporting countries itself rendering the 20% jump in duty itself uh, slightly less feeble as uh, compared to what was expected earlier. So we'll just keep an eye out on this and this space on the whole. But good time to get in a quick technical check. Shivangi uh, Sada of Motilal Oswal joins in now. Shivangi, we've hit yet another record high today. The Nifty is holding with gains of about 50 odd points. The Nifty Bank doing a tad better. What is your call on the index? Good morning, uh, Nigel and Mangalam. Thank you for having me. So. Uh, we've seen a full comeback of the pulls last week uh, towards the end and uh, the put call ratio has improved uh, above 1.4 levels, which clearly indicates that put writers have made a very strong base here. 
Now, India VIX has also cooled off, which clearly indicates that bulls are comfortable at these levels. Uh, even uh, at these levels, we are witnessing uh, that you know follow-up action is visible over here. Stocks are doing good. Sectors are performing. Overall, buy on decline to continue here uh, in both the indices. Uh, so definitely, we are expecting 25,550 immediately and then 25,750 marks on the index. While supports can be seen uh, shifting higher to 25,350 marks. So this would be crucial to watch out for. Um, now, of course, we've seen a good rally in Nifty, and uh, we've seen uh, you know this sustained move from the last uh, you know few uh, odd months. Uh, we've seen this continuous rally in the last three four months. But the uh, you know surprising uh, bit is the bank Nifty, which has uh, you know started moving after a series of underperformance and now holding well above fifty two thousand levels. So definitely, this one will be interesting to watch out. Now, the heavyweights have started performing because of the strong FII's buying, which is coming in. So some of the heavyweight banking stocks to be looked out for. Now, uh, levels per se, we are expecting 52,750 marks for Bank Nifty with a support of 51,850 levels. Got it. All right. Hi, Shivangi. Good morning. Always good to see you in. Tell us about individual stocks. Uh, so, Nigel, individual stocks on my radar, firstly, is Bharti Airtel. This stock has consistently performed and uh, we've seen that it is moving in a rising trend line. From the last 18 months, uh, we have seen a good follow-up action with any declines being bought up. Uh, overall, if we see the derivatives data structure also, there is good amount of longs which is uh, you know being added at these levels, and this stock is getting ready for the uh, next trigger, next uh, rally to you know trade in a fresh territory. So recommending a buy here for a target of 1720 levels and a stop of 1620 zones. And the second pick is from the IT space, which is buzzing in momentum from the last few weeks and good amount of recovery can be seen. Now, IT pack this time, what is interesting is that the heavyweights and the mid cap both are moving, uh, which is, uh, you know, kind of giving a tailwind to the entire sector. Now, this stock is surpassing its uh, previous hurdle zones, uh, previous, uh, you could say, uh, conjuncture levels. And uh, the RSI is also showing positive signs of divergence here. Stock has exactly touched his 50 daily exponential moving average and moved higher with a good support here. So definitely, uh, you know, there is a good amount of base that has been formed here. Now, um, derivative wise also, we are seeing that good, uh, you know, data can be added up over here. Volumes are adding up consistently from the last one week. So definitely stock is getting ready for a good up move. 14,000. Uh, 100 levels is the target that we're seeing for this stock. And uh, 13,290 would be the stop loss to watch out. All right. Uh, can you repeat the stock once again? Dixon is what I'm talking about. All right. Dixon is what you're talking about. Would you have a view on United Breweries? We're seeing some traction out there as well. Let's move to the high point. Uh, definitely. This entire space is, uh, you know, moving for that matter. Even if you look at Radico, hmm. uh, both these stocks, uh, in fact, this entire space is uh, moving a lot uh, in momentum. And seasonality-wise, uh, Manglam, we have seen that these stocks tend to do good in these quarters to come, of course, with this festivity also kicking in. Uh, so definitely, um, these two stocks would be on radar. Uh, conviction yeah. is slightly more on the Radico uh, front and 2200 is what I'm looking at next year. Got it. Okay. All right, Shivanki. Thanks a lot uh, for joining in and uh, giving us your take on the markets. By the way, just keep an eye on some of these housing finance companies. Uh, they have been rallying in anticipation of the valuation catch up with Bajaj Housing. For the time being, they're selling off though. You have LIC Housing Finance. It's moved to the low point of the day. PNB as well was sitting with strong gains. That as well has slipped a little bit. And Canfin Homes as well. All those three names, they have valuation comfort. But for the time being, the street seems that it wants to stick to Bajaj housing. Though, in fact, it will be interesting to see in the next few days because there is good amount of valuation headroom. So let's see whether or not that can get bridged a little bit. Time to slip into a short break. Come back, continue to focus on markets and on stock-specific action. <clears throat> Welcome back. Well, uh, let's get you some corporate commentary then. Honasa Consumers co-founder Varun Alag is optimistic on festive season and is targeting 20% value growth in the next quarter that will be led by festive and wedding season. Let's hear him out. Honestly, um, because these are not one-off events, right? Yeah. Festive was there last year as well as it's here. Right? So from a growth YOI perspective, it is there in the base as well. Right? 
um, and hence our overall goal of ensuring we're able to deliver you know, a high double digit, close to 20% value growth in the next quarter is going to be, continue to be there. And, and that's what we're going to try and make sure that we do. In half two, and some of our core categories, which are non-seasonal, like shampoo and face washes, continue to perform as is. And the category that does see seasonality is moisturization. And, uh, so, which is uh, body creams, face creams, and body lotions. And, uh, so those are the categories which actually spike as we get into second half. Outside of the one quarter, we will do the inventory transition and where we might have primary impacts, and which is most likely this quarter. And all the other three quarters, and we are confident that we will be in those range and from both top line and bottom line improvement perspective. All right, interesting commentary coming in out there from the management of uh, Honasa, Mama Earth, that is. With that, we wrap up on this edition of Chartbusters. Thank you for joining in. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18 as Trading Hour comes up next.